Hi, Hiram here. In my last test with this uh, idea for low power Trangia burner simmer, I did a test using a one wick and it came out kind of long. In uh, 35 minutes it only raised the temperature of the water 139 degrees, which meant it was about, according to uh, John over at Flat Cat Gear, that made it only about 42 watts of heating power. So I'm thinking, well, maybe if I double that and go back and try my original idea. I, you didn't see this. This was something I did off camera where I used two wicks. But what had happened was the uh, cap that I'm using, it's the top of a soda bottle, cut with a side cutter. The uh, whole rigmarole was a little bit too light and it lifted up when the jets started forming and flames came out through the side rather than just the wick part. So now what I have is I have a copper ring here that will hold it down. Now I've had a couple of comments about why bother using a Trangia. I could just use just a can for this. This is true. But I like using the Trangia burner for most of my stuff. What I have here um, I'm going for something that's way, way, way out of the usual, dry baking, where I need a very low flame. But the rest of the time, I like using the Trangia burner. Not necessarily with this stand. This is just for playing around here. But uh, this is just something, if it's a little add-on, I can make the burner even that more useful. Then I've had others say, well, why don't you just take the simmering, and punch a hole in it and use this or another cap but you'd have to do it without the o-ring well that's an idea I mean I have plenty of these rings from the uh, the other simmer rings from the alux burners I could easily punch a hole in that but what I need to do here first is find out what the configuration is that works for what I want for a low power simmer then I can go around and start looking at what other kind of things I can use. I don't think I'd use a cap though because if you put, punch a hole in this then it eliminates it from being able to be used as a alcohol type cover. So let me get my water prepped and I'll be right back to start this test. Okay I've got two cups of water here. Let me light this up now this one like I said is a double wick spread a little bit so that it's not in the middle of the burner I don't know if you can see this I'll show you with camera two okay that's lit I have two cups of water here setting at 61 degrees now 60 61 and let's see where this goes okay this is the flame after five minutes two seconds it's up to 92 degrees so that's up 30 degrees in five minutes now this may look like it's a much wider flame but it's actually two separate flames with a kind of an open spot in between so it's just two spread flames you can see there's a lot of humidity see the uh, condensation on the top on the bottom rather so see so have to see how that affects it Okay, so I showed you on camera two. This must not be enough weight. I don't know, can you see the flames are coming out underneath from the sides? Hmm. It's funny, that didn't happen with the other one, but I guess the thermal feedback is just so much that it's heating up the Trangia burner even more and more making for more vapors and it just pushes its way out from underneath maybe if I could find a silicon gasket or something to hold it in but uh, hmm. I don't know so that one's a fail guess it's back to the drawing board let me put this out really had hoped that that would see with the one wick it doesn't do it but with two wicks it heats it up so much 
that it just comes out through the sides. Okay, so I guess I'm back to playing with it. The times on this won't be uh, appropriate for anything. So, uh, I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.